Hello students, today I am going to begin with the 6th standard maths topic approximation on page 23 of your maths textbook. Now when we go to approximation, we have to first learn how to round up a number. Rounding up a number means making the number simpler but yet keeping its value close to the original. Rounding up of numbers is required at various times. For example, say you go to a restaurant and you, your waiter comes with a bill of rupees 765. You want to pay for your food bill as well as want to give the waiter a small tip. So you can always round up the bill to rupees 800 and give it to the waiter. In this manner, you pay for the food as well as leave a small tip for the waiter. Now rounding up is done in different ways. You can either round up to the nearest 10, to the nearest 100 or to the nearest 1000. Let us begin by rounding up to the nearest 10. Consider an example 475. When we talk about rounding to the nearest 10, we focus on the digit in the tens place. In this number 475, the digit in the tens place is 7. Now the digit in the tens place that is 7 will either change or remain the same depending on the number following it. The number following 7 is 5. Now to understand this we need to create two ranges of numbers. Our first range has numbers from 0 to 4 that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our second range has numbers from 5 to 9 that is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now depends in, on which range this 5 is accordingly the 7 will either change or remain the same. 5 lies in the second range. If the digit lies in the second range then the tens place will be increased by 1. So this number when rounded up to the nearest 10 will be 4, 7 will change to 8. Since we are rounding to the nearest 10, the digit following the tens place has to be 0. So 475 rounded to the nearest 10 will be 480. Let us take another example. We have the number 3272. We have to round this to the nearest 10. Let me begin by underlining the digit in the tens place which is 7. The digit following it is 2. Now I have to check whether it belongs to the first range or the second range. As I told you, if the digit belongs to the first range, the tens place will not change. If it belongs to the second range, the tens place will increase by 1. Now here 2 belongs to the first range. So the tens place digit that is 7 will not change and remain as it is. So the number when rounded up will become 3000. 270. Remember that after the tens place you have to follow by a 0 because you are rounding to the nearest 10. Having understood how to round to the nearest 10, let us now learn how to round to the nearest 100. Let us take an example. Four thousand five hundred and sixty seven. Now since we are rounding to the nearest hundred, we have to concentrate on the digit in the hundreds place. The digit in the hundreds place is five. Let us underline it. The digit after it will decide whether the hundreds place will change or no. Six falls in the first range or second range, we have to check it out. 6 is in the second range, so the digit in the hundreds place will change and increase by 1. So the number will become 4000, 5 will now change into 6. Since we are rounding to the nearest hundred, the digits after the hundreds place have to be zeros. So the number 4567 when rounded to the nearest hundred becomes 4600. Let's take another example. Here I have 2802. My digit in the hundreds place is 8. The digit following it is 0. 
zero is in the first range so the hundreds place will not change and remain as it is so the number will be 2 8 followed by two zeros so 2802 rounded to the nearest hundred is 2800 now let us learn how to round to the nearest thousand let's take an example 16785 now when we are rounding to the nearest thousand we have to underline the digit in the thousands place in this example the digit in the thousands place is six let's see which is a digit next to it it is seven seven is in the second range so the number in the thousands place will increase by one so six will now change into seven since we are rounding to the nearest thousand after the thousands place all the digits will be changed to zeros so 16785 rounded to the nearest thousand is 17000 let us take one more example Twenty four thousand three hundred and thirty five. Again, we are rounding to the nearest thousand, so we underline the digit to the in the thousands place. Check out the number after it. That is three. Three is in the first range, so the digit in the thousands place will not change. It will remain as it is. So the number will be two. Four will not change. Followed by zeros so 24335 when rounded up to the nearest thousand is 24000 so this is the way you round to the nearest tens hundreds or thousands when you are rounding to the nearest ten underline the digit in the tens place check the digit after it whether it belongs to the first range or second range if it is in the first range the digit does not change if it is in the second range the digit has to be increased by 1. Having understood how to round a number to the nearest 10, hundreds and thousands, you all can solve question 1, 2 and 3 of exercise 1D from the textbook. Now let's move to question 4, 5 and 6. In question 4, 5 and 6, you are asked to find the approximate sum of two given numbers. You are given two numbers, you are told whether to round it to the nearest 10, hundred or thousand and get the approximate sum approximate sum means a rounded up sum sometimes the word estimate is also used in place of approximate let us take an example where we have to find the approximate sum you will be told whether to round it up to the nearest ten hundred or thousand I will take an example where we are asked to round to the nearest 100. These are the two numbers 247 and 385. You have to get the approximate sum rounding it to the nearest 100. So the digit in the hundreds place have to be underlined. Here it is the digit 2 which is in the hundreds place and here it is the digit 3 which is in the hundreds place. Now the digit after it will decide whether it remains the same or it changes. In the first number the digit following 2 is 4. 4 lies in the first range so the digit in the hundreds place will not change. It will remain as it is. So this will remain as 2. Since we are rounding to the nearest 100, after the 100's place, we have to put zeros. In the second number, 385, the 8 here lies in the second range. I'll just write the ranges again. The first range was from 0 to 4 and the second range was from 5 to 9. Okay, so the digit in the hundreds place is 3 and the digit after it is 8. Now 8 is in the second range. As I told you all, when the digit following is in the second range, 
the number will the digit previous to it will change by one place so 3 will be increased by one place and will now become 4 so 385 rounded to the nearest 100 will be 400 now 247 becomes 200 385 becomes 400 when rounded to the nearest 100 the number is very easy to add 2 plus 4 is 6 just followed by zeros so 200 plus 400 is 600 so addition becomes much more simpler when you round it to a nearest 10 100 or 1000 let us see how this approximate value is different from the exact value if i to add the exact numbers that is 247 plus 385 the answer would be 632 so you all can see that the exact value and the approximate value is not very different it is more or less close to each other the only advantage is approximation becomes easier to deal with the number is easier to remember and understand so this is how we get an approximate sum similarly you may be asked to get an approximate sum by rounding to the nearest 10 or rounding to the nearest thousand in that case instead of the hundreds place you have to change the tens place in case it is rounding to the nearest thousand you have to change the thousands place so in the same way you all can solve question 4 5 and 6 from exercise 1d now let's move to question 7 8 9 here, instead of finding the sum, you are asked to find the difference. Difference means you subtract the two numbers. So now I will show you all an example where we find the approximate difference of two numbers. Say rounding to the nearest thousand. I am given two numbers, six thousand. 395 minus 2641 I have to find the difference between these two numbers rounding them up to the nearest thousand so I have to underline the thousands place in this number 6 is in the thousands place and in this number 2 is in the thousands place the digit after it will decide whether the thousands place will change or remain the same. Here it is the digit 3. 3 lies in the first range so the thousands place will not change. It will remain as it is. That is 6. Since we are rounding to the nearest thousand after 6 we have to follow zeros. Minus 2641. Now the digit following 2 is 6. 6 is in the second range. Now since it is in the second range, the digit in the thousands place will change. From 2, it will now change to 3. So this will become 3 followed by zeros. So 6395 rounded to the nearest thousand is 6000. 2641 rounded to the nearest thousand is 3000. 6000 minus 3000 is very easy to calculate. We just have to do 6 minus 3. We all know that 6 minus 3 is 3 followed by 3 zeros. So 6000 minus 3000 will give you 3000. The problem becomes very simple and easy to solve. So in the same manner you all can solve questions 7, 8 and 9 where you are asked to find the approximate difference of two numbers by rounding up to the nearest tens, hundreds or thousands. Sometimes in place of approximate, you may also come across the word estimate. The word approximate and estimate means the same thing. Let us take an example where we are asked to find the approximate product. As you all know, product is when you multiply two numbers. The answer that you get is called a product. Let's take an example rounding to the nearest 100. Say you are given two numbers, 273 multiplied by 102. Okay, you are asked to find the approximate product by rounding to the nearest hundred. Underline the digit in the hundreds place. Check out the digit after it. Here it is seven, so the hundreds place will be increased 
and change to 3 followed by zeros since we are rounding to the nearest 100. Here the digit following 1 is 0. 0 is in the first range so the hundreds place does not change it remains as it is followed by zeros. The multiplication becomes very simple. You just have to do 300 multiplied by 100. You have to do 3 multiplied by 1. You don't have to actually multiply 300 and 100. Just do 3 multiplied by 1. We know it is 3. Since the zeros are all in the end, in your final answer, just write the total number of zeros which are there. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. So in my answer, I will just add this 4 zeros. So 30,000 will be my approximate product when I multiply these two numbers.